there's a show that's going to be announced very soon. I am allowed to now start teasing it. But um, a lot of people have contacted myself and Jasmine, one of the other presenters, over the years, many, many times, saying, we want to know what happens next. Well, yes. watch the space, because we've been filming something and it's going to be announced very soon. And welcome to Two Women Judging. I'm Michelle. And I'm Liz. It's blowing cold, isn't it? It's just like living on a ship, this country. It really is. The UK, one minute it's hot, one minute it's cold, it rains, it snows, it, it's everything. Four seasons in a day, they call mm. it, don't they? That's what it feels like. You yeah. know, it's the run-up to, to Christmas, but uh, it's either dank and damp and november and cold, or it's bright and shiny and freezing cold sun. Well, you know, I wrote that article for the local community magazine. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote about November, but, you know, you could have roses and sit outside. So I wrote that. It's you can't. <laughs> God, it's not. Freezing. It is freezing. So I won't do that again. Are you planning to get away next year? I am. Anywhere. <laughs> I haven't got anything booked. Well, I told you about the holiday we're going on, didn't I? Oh, the one that you <laughs> accident your husband bid for. Did I ever say this on the podcast before? I just know, we I can't remember. I... We are so middle-aged. Okay, so how crazy is this? So my husband goes to some legal awards thing and uh, it's all for charity. So he thought, well, I'll get the bidding started on the silent auction. So he does that, except nobody else bids. And then when he comes home that later that night... A little bit tipsy. Possibly a little bit tipsy. He says, guess what? We've got a holiday <laughs> next year. We're going to Zimbabwe. <laughs> so wasn't planning on that, but I'm glad the money went to charity. And I'm kind of excited about going to Zimbabwe now. We You're going to Victoria Falls? Victoria yeah. Falls. We're... Doing a hippo cruise, not on one. <laughs> we'll be in a boat. Along. Yeah. Giddy up. Yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful country. Yes. Well, I mean, obviously, it's changed a bit from years ago when I was there. But oh, you've it, done Zimbabwe, have you? I went white water rafting there on the Zambezi, oh. and I am still alive. Just that's cool. <laughs> I had a video of it. We were talking about a long time ago in the eighties, and uh, Emma. That was black it, and white then, wasn't it? Near enough. Yeah. She watched it. She must have been about five or six. She goes, "Mummy, did you die?" <laughs> I was so scared. I was so scared. My face. Oh, because it, oh, it was just awful. No, no crash helmets or anything. Oh no, no waiver oh, forms oh, or anything like that. Like that. They had. Um, we had a, a, a doobie chops. A, a you know what you call it? A life jacket. But they just said, you know, if you if you fall out, make sure you turn around, put your legs facing forward. If you hit a rock, don't worry. Your life jacket should help you i was like why and they said if you go into a, a water you know one of these things that pull you down these water i don't know what you call them they you spin and you get pulled down they that was they said definitely should help you come out so i was like we're not going to fall out are we but they flipped the boats on purpose who do the, the guides if you don't well they did in those days so just warning you so they you I know, won't be yeah. in one of those <laughs> no, it, was, it seemed to be <laughs> i was told to sit at the front not the back so you might get really wet and I you know, basically swallowed the whole of the Zambezi because my mouth was open all the time, so I was so scared. But it means that because the boat goes out, everyone falls out. But I hang on. I was, I was there holding on. I was the only one left in the boat. No nails I left. I have never been so frightened in my life. So don't do that. Won't be doing that. But it's but a lovely country. Yeah. So I've got that to look up, look forward to. That'll be really fun. But you do need something to look forward to, don't you, this time of year? You need to, you know, even if it's a staycation or just something you're planning to do. And I think the idea of um, a gap year would be fun. We should do a, we should, well, we've got a guest coming on today. We can ask her about that. Mm. But I think we need to explore this whole gap year idea in much more detail because it really appeals to me. I think it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a year all at once. It's sort of, you could do it two weeks a week. You know, but yeah. basically, with a whole year, we could do a take out podcast on the road. Oh, we could. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get that finance somehow. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. But, you know, but you don't have to do it all at once, so, yeah. But I, I love getting right, away well, from this country. Let's make a yeah. note. We've got to mm -hmm. do a podcast on just doing uh, gap year travel. But meantime, um, we've got Laura Hamilton of A Place in the Sun. Oh, your um, husband's as obsessed with that programme as, as mine. As yours, oh, yes. It's quite worrying, it really is. I'm surprised Paul's not round. <laughs> I think we've got most of those episodes sort of recorded on our TV, and it's. But I think it's just one of those lovely, lovely shows that gives you kind of inspiration, and it makes you think outside the box, and you think, oh yeah, that could be me. I could go and live in Portugal and have a mountain view and a 
you know, a, a pool in my backyard, and it could be, you know, it, it just a makes lot you cheaper than here, it, Well, frankly. yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. But anyway, so Laura's going to come on and just maybe give us some ideas about where to go. And we thought it'd be like a, a, a nice, uplifting bit of a podcast in these winter months. So um, should we get Laura on? Yeah. So who better than Laura Hamilton, known to millions for over a decade as a presenter on Channel 4's A Place in the Sun, to give us some inspiration for a midlife gap year? Off camera, Laura's a keen traveller, a property developer and entrepreneur, launching her own clothing collection with Verity and Me. Last year, she joined ITV's This Morning team, prevent, uh, presenting live features on location. And fun fact that I found out about you, you're a qualified postmistress and a pilot in training. How fun is that? <laughs> yeah. So, Laura, we would love to pick your brains on pointers to travel the globe when the kids leave home and we've got the freedom of empty nests to go on some adventures. So welcome, Laura. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It's great to speak to you. Where would you go if you had if you, you know, could go anywhere really in the world? It's interesting hearing you say adventures when kids have flown the nest because just because you have children doesn't mean you can't have the best travel adventures with them. And I have absolutely loved having so many travel adventures with them since they were both three weeks old and started travelling with me when I returned straight back to work. So um, it's really, it's one of those things where some people will say, well, well, you've had children and, and your life changes. Of course, your life changes and holidays might change or whatever. But I, I've known no difference to kind of travel with them both from an early age. That being said, now they're at both at school full time. They still do travel with me when it's holidays. Um, and so we, we have great adventures together. But I now, um, I, I continue to do my job and I do go away whilst they're at school and they're with their, their dad um, and I, I have to go away with work. So, um, yeah, those adventures as they're, they're getting older, me, you know, either going away on my own um, because I'm, I'm a big advocate for solo travel, um, whether you're travelling with a partner, whether you're travelling with friends, um, I, I guess I've got all that to come. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, when you mentioned solo travel, I know that a lot of women are nervous about traveling on their own. Um, you know, you've got any hints or suggestions of, of how they could, you know, get make, be more comfortable? Well, when I was 22, yeah, when I was 22, I took the decision. I had a bit of a gap in filming schedules and I took the decision to go traveling around the world and I planned to go on my own. And actually, one of my friends at the time said to me, Laura, I want to come with you. So it wasn't a case of you can't go on your own. She was like, I want to come and experience this with you. So I did end up traveling with, with her on around the world ticket. However, we met so many solo like female travelers. And I think it's not something that anyone should be fearful of because you'd be surprised you meet a lot of people that are doing the same. So when you kind of initially think, right, I'm going to go out and want to travel on my own. You think you're going to be doing it on your own, but you end up meeting a load of people and making a load of new friends along the way anyway. Um, but then, you know, now when I travel and I'm traveling with work, I am on my own. And sometimes it's just so lovely just to have. Life can be hectic, you know, whether we're busy with social media or as mums, parents, you know, um, busy at work. To travel on your own and have just a bit of you time. I mean, I know not everyone's always good with their own company, but I personally you know, love just being on my own, you know, hotel room, candles or going off and exploring, listening to music, listening to a podcast. It's just, I think there's, there's you know, nothing more exciting than having the, the freedom to just, just go do that on your own. Nobody holding you back. Mm, agree with that. I did that once. I went to Crete on a tennis holiday and I thought I was incredibly brave to go on my own. But actually, you know, once you've done that once, you can do it and you know we've always got our social yeah. crutches our phones when we're sitting alone at dinner but um so yeah I, you... I quite like it I mean it, I, I was I was in um I was in Spain a couple of weeks ago working and uh you know in the evening I went off to a shopping mall and I bought a few bits and I went to a very busy restaurant and I sat there on my own eating dinner on my own glass of wine 
had my earphones in and okay, I, I was sort of listening to music and stuff, but I was surprised a few people did sort of stare over at me. But it's all about feeling comfortable, like with yourself, right? So if you're like, do you know what? Yeah, I'm sitting here on my own. It's not like I haven't got any friends. I'm just choosing <laughs> to do this on my own and kind of owning it and feeling that that's absolutely okay to do that. Well, I mean, you have travelled the world, haven't you? I, I, I saw from your bio that you've been all over the world and amazing countries. And, you know, looking at it from sort of more of our midlife, you're a bit younger than us, but younger. looking at sort of more midlife travel, there are so many ways that you can go away and do this this midlife gap year, this, what would you, what was the other thing? Sabbatical. A sabbatical, oh. you know, a reset. Um I'll tell you one of the most incredible, um, incredible journeys and um, travel experiences I had earlier this year. I was only talking to somebody about it yesterday. Um, at the start of the year, it was February, I um, ended up, I was doing a job with this morning and I ended up going on a bit of a travel um, experiment to see how far I could travel by train. And because tra travelling by train is supposed to be, um, you know, better the environment there's far few carbon emissions per mile compared to any other mode of transport and I was like okay so we um we got the train we went in um London got the train from London to Paris and then we traveled all the way through Switzerland on the Benina Express and um it was it was absolutely amazing we made our way down to Venice all by train and just the things you see when you travel that way, it was just, it was amazing. And I, I stopped in a place called Interlaken and oh, I yeah. ended up yeah. doing a bit of paragliding and we ran off the side of the mountain. And uh, I, mean, I, I always post about my travels, obviously on Instagram. Um, and uh, yeah, that was just an, an absolutely amazing, amazing experience. And uh, I mean, like, I've also traveled by crew, uh, like cruise ship. Personally, I'm, that's not the way I would I, I love to, to to travel and explore places because I like to be on the on the ground I like to get there and I like to see as much of it as possible and sometimes I feel like cruising is a little bit restrictive for me because you don't spend as much time in each destination as I love to be able to spend mm. um but saying that I've had some amazing trips on cruise ships and some people my parents absolutely love cruising and for them they're like well we don't want to we don't need to spend a couple of weeks in one destination we just want to have a little snippet of it and then think is that where we'd like to go back to and explore further mm. so I totally you know I totally get that um but traveling by train was a, an awesome experience and what I will say is I've, I've been very fortunate like growing up I, I spent a lot of my childhood camping and caravanning and I had some of the best holidays you know in the UK and in France um, I've done boating holidays, self-drive drive boat holidays, where I've hired a boat and gone along the Thames. And Oh, um, the canal the ways and everything. That's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. So forget how gorgeous a canal network that we have yeah. in this country. But around the Thames, yeah, the River Thames yeah. is beautiful, except it's got a lot of locks, that's what I would say. Yeah, that, that, was, that was great fun. <laughs> the fun so of it, yeah. Children, and they were, you know, loving open, opening place the locks. Um, and then um, I've done glamping holidays with the children. I've, I've also been, you know, extremely fortunate that I have stayed in some high-end hotels. Equally, I've backpack travelled. And I honestly can say, hand on heart, there is not one favoured, like, I can't say it always has to be five star. It always, because that is not what travel is about for me. It's about the experiences the people the sights the sounds the taste the you know all of that I mean I, I I stayed in a um a hut in the middle of the jungle in Thailand and I went trekking um through the jungle after having burnt my leg on an exhaust pipe on a, a scooter in Thailand because I got off the wrong way and um when I did it I, my leg was like on the, on the exhaust pipe and all these Thai ladies came to me and were like Thai tattoo, Thai tattoo. And they were breaking off bits of aloe vera plant, giving it to me saying, rub this on your leg yeah. and you it won't scar. And it never scarred. But I went jungle trekking the day after that happened and I had my leg wrapped in, wrapped in a bin liner um, because they were saying, you've got to be careful, you know, the leeches yeah. will be on your leg. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I lo I've loved that type of travel, but then also I've been very fortunate to stay in some luxurious hotels. So 
all of the so experiences when, you think you've got stories to tell. So when you've been travelling, say, you know, doing the trekking, have you met, you know, a different range of ages? You know, because I'd love to do something like that and I've never done it. Was that up yeah, here? I, Chiang Rai, I, Chiang Mai area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, I flew into Bangkok and then up to Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, checked around there, then down to Phuket, um, over to Pithi. Um, no, always met a, a real range of ages. Um, obviously, you get, you know, younger people that are on their gap years and they have mm. a, a longer period of time to go and they're on more around the world trip. Or then you'll meet other people that will be having a three week trip. Um, but that is, again, what's great about people that are traveling, the people that you meet and the stories that you hear and how you can experience places you don't have to be doing a gap year to go and experience you don't have to take you can see a hell of a lot of a place you know in in a week if or, you know two weeks if you're if you don't want to go into a hotel and sit around a pool again there's nothing wrong with that because there are times when you just think I just need to chill out I don't want to have to worry about anything but actually in a couple of weeks you can really explore a place I had an amazing trip in Cuba and I was there for for two and a half weeks and um really that was a really interesting trip because I met some people on the plane on the way over and they said to me, oh, which hotel, I was with a boyfriend at the time, which hotel are you staying in? And, and we said, oh, we're, we're staying in a hotel in Varadero. And they were like, oh, great, yeah, we are too. We can, we can have some drinks around the pool. And we were like, no, we're not staying in the hotel, though, the whole time. What we're going to do is we're just going to dump our bags and we're going to use it as a base and we're going to go off and travel for two weeks. And we stayed in um, these Casa Particulares, which are local people's houses that that let them out. And some beautiful colonial um, properties went down to the Bay of Pigs and um, went to Havana on the, on the, on the train. Um, it was, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Sorry. I will bore you with travel stories all day long, but I also, I got stuck. Do you remember the Icelandic ash cloud? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was in the Maldives when the Icelandic ash oh. cloud happened and you kind of think, Oh great. You know, I, I'm in the Maldives. Who doesn't want to be stuck in the Maldives? for a few few, for a few more weeks but instead of staying there because we'd been there for a week and we didn't know how long we were going to be stuck there for we uh thought well let's make the most of this as beautiful as it is where else is close by so we ended up taking a flight to Sri Lanka for 35 pounds and spontaneously going to travel Sri Lanka for two weeks and then when everyone had got on their flights home from the Maldives and there was a bit more availability, we flew back from Sri Lanka. So we travelled the whole of Sri Lanka um, to Anarathapura, Sigiriya, uh, Kandy, and uh, into the tea plantations inland. And then, as I said, when when uh, when they were like, right, OK, there's more availability on the flight, we were like, right, we'll, we'll fly back home to the Maldives now and fly home. So That is you know, a real joy, isn't it, having spontaneity? And I think... Going back to, you know, if you were going for a longer period of time, like, you know, a lot of people are going for weeks or months, to have that, like, let's just stay here for a few weeks. Let's just get on a train somewhere in Europe and and turn up in a city. So much of our lives is structured and booked in. I do, I do. Time. That that does very much depend on where we're we're at in our lives and, you know, what we do for a job. You know, I've always been self employed since pretty much 18 I've always been self-employed and again I know that's not for everybody so if you've got a limited amount of holiday you you can take I appreciate you know not everyone has those luxuries however I think the pandemic has changed things if if you are able to obviously work from home I'm not encouraging people to tell their bosses I'm working from home but secretly I'm going on a trip around the world um but there is a little bit more flexibility for people that they can work in other places so um, maybe that, that's changed the travel landscape a little bit. But also, if people are in a position and, and can afford to, like there's like so many low-cost flights still available. Just to like mm-hmm. think about, well, I'll nip away for a weekend. You know, again, you can see a lot of a place in just a couple of days. Um, I'm, I'm taking the children. We're, we're big skiers in the family. And um, it's something that I did as, as a child and I really, you know, wanted my children to, to get on the slopes and be in the mountains. And I'm taking them skiing the week before Christmas. And I thought, oh, this is going to probably cost a lot because it's peak season. But I've managed to find return flights for all of us for basically £60 um, each person. So the three of us, you know, £60 each. And the hotel 
is just over 600 pounds for three nights and that's in the sierra nevada mountains in spain so you know there are deals that you can you can find um I guess you so you know where to holiday, yeah, but you know where to holiday, find the deals. Uh, you know, yeah. I think a lot of people you get nervous. You look at the internet, and there's so much out there. You know, are there particular places that you would recommend to try and find a deal like that? Well, I that's that's something that I've I've obviously booked up independently. Um, I've I just went online and found found the flights, and you know, found the hotel. I sort of knew the hotel chain anyway. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be sort of through a package deal. You can find things by being prepared to find the flights differently to the hotel. But when having the confidence to do that, some people again don't want to do that because they want to feel like, well, they have got an agent that's going to look after them and, you know, be their one go to um, should anything happen or they want to speak to anyone. So yeah, but I, I, Again, I, there's not one particular thing that I do when I travel. I'm very kind of like, oh, well, maybe I'll do this this week. Maybe I'll make a package on a day here. Maybe I'll do I just, I'm always open to seeing what's out there. Would you ever consider, you know, like the house swapping idea that they did in The Holiday, you know, the, the movie The Holiday, and they swapped houses for a couple of weeks? Yeah. That intrigues me. That. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I would. Am I going to meet a Jude Law and fall in love? I was going to say, <laughs> you get the man as well. If that's part of the deal, yes, sign me yeah. up. In. <laughs> I'd love to do that. I really would. Yeah. Yeah. You get you like go into their home and you see, well, you know, you, you, you're like an imposter, really, aren't you? But... Although I am a bit of a clean freak, so I'd probably, and I love interior design, so I'd have to stop myself. <laughs> oh, from, come to like, my house then. Re- redesigning their house and cleaning yeah, it you and Liz should swap, swap. Well, have you ever tried um with your kids or without um sort of a motoring holiday that kind of intrigues me i know there's fun ideas to get motor homes in new zealand or uh what you know what an rv in the states and yeah um... well i i grew up caravanning and, and you know camping so my mum and dad had a touring caravan when i was younger and then they sold it and they've actually now got one again and they go away with a group of friends and they call themselves the silver nomads um so so they do that but again interestingly when I was filming a place in the sun in France and I do I do find France quite a one of the more challenging places actually to travel with little children you absolutely beautiful beautiful country um but some of the hotels like if you're in certain parts then you know you go to Spain and you go to Cyprus and you go to um Portugal or whatever you find lots of very very family friendly hotels whereas in France I, I find that the it's either like um, Euro campsites where they're amazing for kids or like beautiful chateaus or it just doesn't feel like they've got those they, they don't cater for those kind of um holidays so but I still love it and I've spent a lot of time there with the kids and when I was there with the place in the sun a number of years ago, I ended up staying on a Euro campsite whilst I was filming. I mean, I swear the people on the campsite thought I was bonkers because obviously they're all like dressed really chilled and relaxed. And every day I have to wear the same outfit for a week. So they probably thought that poor girl's luggage hasn't turned up and why is she overdressed to me on the campsite every day? Um, but they they loved that. And what we looked into, because we were travelling to another destination, was, oh, wouldn't it be great to have a, a motorhome and drive around? But the only, the only didn't work for me is I need I need a vehicle to get myself to location every day. So my only restrictions with the, the motorhome holiday is when you need your vehicle, you've got to take that vehicle, haven't you, off sort of site to, to kind of go and explore other, other places. So that was my only my only thought on, on why we didn't we didn't do didn't do it. But I would totally be up for it. I mean, I love that Bradley Walsh, Bradley and Bob. Yeah. I mean, I know I know Bradley. Oh, yeah. I worked with Bradley years ago in Panto, and I was on the chase with him, and did very badly because I hate <laughs> quiz shows and buckle under that kind of pressure, and came across as a bit of an airhead, which I'm not. Um, <laughs> just, just set the record straight there. Um, well, I mean, some people might call me an airhead, but anyway um so but that show the breaking dad with with brand brandon barney is brilliant you know that that idea of being able to do something like that with your, well, the, your, your parents yeah and your that intergenerational <laughs> trip that is kind of marvelous isn't it because yeah. you know you think when you're adult kids 
are adults, the last thing they want to do is spend time with you, you know, going from one location to another. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talking more about a place in the sun, I'm intrigued because oh my gosh, my husband is obsessed. With so that is show. mine. He's got them all recorded. I, every Sunday afternoon, he's watching. Oh, I'm surprised my husband didn't take the day off work just to come and see this recording. I'm surprised my husband's not just up in the corner because I told him. But with that show, have you? So obviously, you go to all these amazing locations, and it's quite inspirational. I think you know it's not surprising really. A lot of people in this country might think. You know, the weather is iffy, you know, maybe investing in a property abroad is a good idea. Um, do you, you probably have loads of people come and ask you all the time, you know, is it a good idea? Do you know many of them where they give it a go and then they think, no, it's not for me, I'm coming back? No, well, no I mean, look, I there's a show that's going to be announced very soon. I am allowed to now start teasing it but um a lot of people have contacted myself and jasmine one of the other presenters over the years many many times saying we want to know what happens next well yes. watch this space because we've been filming something and it's going to be announced very soon um but i think that will be that would be really lovely for people to be able to see because we, we as presenters a few of us do keep in contact with people that we have helped. I've stayed in people's houses that I've helped them buy, um, like rented them from them when I've gone back to a destination. And it's, yeah, that is, people don't have regrets. I mean, a lot of people are sort of saying, we can't wait to just be out here more. In fact, the couple that I was, um, so I was supposed to be filming this week, but for family reasons, I've, I'm not able to film. Um, but I was going to be meeting up with a couple that I helped in the pandemic buy a property abroad and they never planned to be there full time. But now they are pretty much abroad full time. There's another couple, a young couple, actually, that are 30. One of the youngest people I've filmed with on A Place in the Sun. And I helped them in the pandemic in Greece buy a holiday home. And then I met up with them last summer. They both, uh, one of them's working under a nomadic visa. He's li They're living in Greece full time and she's a photographer. So they've made them move full time. So, yeah, I mean, it's, there's uh, so many, so many happy people out there. And it's amazing to have been part of that journey with them. And not to make it political in any way, but Brexit hasn't stopped people being able to have those opportunities, has it? No. Well, obviously I worry you about have the 90 day rule. Yeah, I do worry about, you know, what happens if anything happens to you health-wise when you've you've moved abroad. The healthcare, system, the healthcare system in some of the countries overseas is far better than, than mm. here. And Spain in particular has got an incredible um, healthcare. Um, so, and they can access yeah, it if people, they're British. People tend to not worry so much about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but people do pay sort of for pri private um, healthcare, but it's not the same as in the UK. Um, what I will say obviously affects people is the 90 day rule um, and wanting to live, uh, stay in a location more than 90 days because under the rules you can currently only do 90 and 180 days in that destination unless you've got an EU passport or, you know, if, if you've got Irish passport. Um, so that, that, that has affected things. But again, there are still means and ways of buying property if you spend over a certain amount of money. You will, um, you know, it's all about investing in the country. If you're working mm -hmm. there and you can prove that you're going to bring in a certain amount of income, there's no magic visa. Gosh, I don't want to get into, you know, all of these these bits and pieces because I don't want to kind of bore you with it. But there are definitely ways. And again, coming back to the pandemic and um, the flexibility that people might have from being able to work remotely, that has actually had a positive impact and people kind of going oh do you know what I want to buy a holiday home and sometimes I might want to work work abroad I'm still going to be you know dialing into the office so yeah it's we definitely haven't seen a dip in people not buying it if anything I'd say the other way it's interesting what about have you um you've probably come across this in some Italian villages in I think it's northern Italy they're selling off property One pound about a pound, pound. yeah 
do you know much about that and whether have you heard of anybody who actually I invested know, I don't know a huge, yeah i don't know a huge huge amount um about it um obviously you've got the amanda holden and Holden's, carly yeah. they program don't they based around around that um i i haven't viewed any of those on a place in the sun and i can't tell you why actually i don't know why we haven't um that would be an interesting angle wouldn't it definitely yeah Def yeah yeah and and so with language when they do move abroad do you find a lot of them are really making an effort to culturally fit in to to learn spanish or learn italian or whatever it is or do they tend to move there and just make friends with other expats? Again, every every situation's different. You know, you've got some people that might want to totally, you know, immerse themselves in a Spanish, Italian, whatever, Portuguese way of life, and they buy a property and they're surrounded by locals and they need to do that in order to to get by. <laughs> But then there are other people that might buy in an area when where it's predominantly expats and they don't have the need to speak the language. So they don't. So every everybody's situation and circumstances are different. But I think most of the people will say, well, we want to learn a bit of the language. We want to to be able to um, speak to the locals, and 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 it does go a long way when with the locals if you at least try. Yeah, I think that's fair, isn't it? I mean. A lot of English people always say, I was going to say, if you learnt American. Speak English, yeah. <laughs> learnt American, yeah. But, um, gosh, that's so interesting. It's it's made me think about some some ideas that I never really considered before. It would be really interesting to to move. Because yeah, cause you don't have to, you, when you said it's two weeks at a time, you don't, you know, I always think of a gap year because, like, the kids doing them. It's a whole year, but you can do, you have your year, but you get, come and go. You can do two weeks, three weeks, as you said, and if you'd like somewhere else, go on, or you can come back. You've got the flexibility. Yeah. Mm. And you could rent yeah. out your house, of course, in England um, or wherever you live mm -hmm. and uh, use that to fuel your travel. Travel adventures. Yeah, mm. yeah. Gosh, so much good stuff there. Thank you so much. Um, well, if you could go anywhere, one last question. If you could go anywhere in the world that you haven't already been, <laughs> oh, I know. What, what? Where would you? Where would you go to? Costa Rica. Ah, you like yeah. the rainforests and everything. Yeah, I'd love to take the children there um, because I know my son is totally obsessed with lizards. Like, has a serious obsession <laughs> with lizards and. I just think it, I, I've heard so. We filmed a place in the sun there, but I've never been on those shoots. And I've heard so many amazing things about Costa Rica. So I think possibly, possibly, possibly next Easter, I might do a little adventure with the children. And I don't know if it's a good time of year to go. Um, then I think it might well be. Uh, but at the end of the day, if it doesn't really matter, whether wise if it's raining, whatever, you still yeah. still be an amazing it's experience. An well, if you go, do you try the Mongo it's mongoose poop coffee? Have you heard of that? Well, no. <laughs> Really, I've been to Costa Rica. I didn't try it, but everybody else in the family did it. It's very, oh. very strong coffee, and they, they, yes, they use the uh, digestive processes of the mongoose to make oh. it really intense in flavour. <laughs> so there's so, one that will be, be a bucket list. Now, where can our listeners find more about you? Um, you have a website, and and what's your Instagram? handle so they can oh, find you on there too yeah so my website is laurahamiltonofficial.com and then um i am on instagram and twitter uh, laura hamilton tv and yeah i mean i love i love creating content on on instagram a lot of it is travel related um i did get a really weird message from someone actually a couple of weeks ago saying i can't follow you anymore i'm just um bored of seeing you on holiday and i'm like well, i travel for my job job what am I supposed to do? Well, you certainly appear to have loads of positive energy. So thank you so much for being on the podcast today. You've given us so oh, many fabulous you. ideas. I'm going to go and book a holiday. Oh, lovely to chat. Okay. Oh, I just want to get away now. <laughs> yeah, I know it's Christmas coming up, though. It's just, oh, she's just so enthusiastic about travel and everything. It's just made me want to go anywhere. Yeah, I would happily go anywhere. I'd, I'd stay in the UK. There's some great staycations that you can do here. I do love a staycation because you don't have to actually get on a plane. I know, just think about all that time that you save when you're not at the airport. Um, I'd like, I want to do the Eurostar as well, across to Brussels. 
Um, yeah. See my daughter. I like your style. Um, so definitely going to do that. Definitely going to book in some, you know, like a city break. Do you know what I miss is? You used to be able to go to the travel agent and pick up the, the you know, the brochures. Oh, and you'd yes. take a pump home and you'd flick through oh and you'd gosh, dream. Oh, my gosh, the and, Thomas uh, Cook, Cook and, and then... The, the, well, they... Cos, Cos, not Cosmo. What was it? God, I've forgotten. <laughs> it was... What's a company called Cosmo, wasn't it? I don't know. Uh, Monarch Holiday. Cosmo. Yeah, Cos- yeah. I don't know what that yeah. yeah. Or the Viking Cruises. Yeah. But oh, well, I've been on Viking Cruises. You used to get a whole load of them and then circle all your wish list. Maldives, never happening. Yeah. Jamaica, never yeah. happening. Saffron Walden, possibly. <laughs> but no, I did a Viking Cruise. I really enjoyed it. I know that's very middle-aged and, thing, but, and it's full of lots of middle-aged people. But they're really good fun. I think I've spoken to that before. Because I, I really not didn't think I'd be a, a cruise fan. But you, because you get on the boat, get off the boat on a, on a river one. You 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 get off daily, so you get to see so many different places. And as Laura said, you you can go. They are good for going back to, going to see someone. Go actually, I'll go back to that place, which you generally don't do it to be honest. So it's like a taster. Yeah, and and there's lots of tasting of wine as well. Well, uh, the other thing I would like about a river cruise, or even just through a smaller, I don't know, Mediterranean cruise. We did the Disney cruise many years ago <laughs> with the kids, and it was really really fun. Although I think the pool was a bit yellow. <laughs> We all know why that. But you is. had your free your armband for free drink. <laughs> but I mean, it's just it's just so many people, mm. and it is like um it's it's like a village on the mm-hmm. sea, isn't it? Yeah. Um. But what I what scared me a little bit at night was if we were um, you know, if you went to bed at night and you were travelling somewhere, it was black everywhere. Mm. It's like not a light except for the stars, and that sort of I don't know gave me a little bit of anxiety. I don't think I'd be so bad now, but I really fancy doing. A med cruise, or you know, well, just coming away from Miami. Well, those ones you see, you generally you you dock. I've done I've done one from sort of a Barcelona to somewhere. I can't remember where we did like the Italian coast or whatever. Well, there you actually you just each day you dock in a new place. You wake up and you're like, oh, I'm in France. Oh, I'm in Italy. It's, I like that. Yeah, but the river cruises as Even well. Better, you're because not, you, yeah, you're not. Yeah. Also, you haven't got the swell. I, I I really rated my. Danube <laughs> and I, I used to really take the mickey I'm not I'm not denying it it is it's something that you I think the perception is it's full of old people and it's not it's full of people like us who like like visiting places like a drink like yeah. nice brilliant food yeah well I, that's it would be key for me to go on a cruise where the quality of the food was really good and actually I'm not gonna lie I don't want to go on family cruises anymore I don't want loads of little unless I'm taking my grandchildren one day when you I have them. something I was gonna <laughs> one of these days um when that, you know, I want mm. entertainment. What I want is great quality entertainment, great quality food and really interesting places to see. And people. And you, you get like-minded people on, the, on those cruises. Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, it's great for making new connections. Mm. But there's loads of It's not just Vikings. There's loads of other cruises. I keep selling them. I'm not, I'm not selling Viking, by the way. <laughs> not gifted. Not yet. <laughs> I sound terrible, but I did. I really Wait, enjoyed it. You're just talking about the one that you know. You've been on, yeah, exactly. But there's lots of them, yeah. But I quite find a canal cruise, as you mentioned before. On, on, you know, it's been to Laura. I think a canal is such a different way of life. Yeah, yeah, and doing all the locks, and, yeah, and things like that. That's a good family one, actually, isn't it? To do, to yeah, do that with kids, because yeah, yeah, they always the love tent. that whole yeah. experience. Get, get them working. Yeah, and you can take your dog and all that. Yeah, stuff. I mean that's that's something to explore. Yeah. Dog friendly. Because it's expensive to leave your dog in kennels. Tell us about if you're still lucky enough to have a dog. Oh, oh, I don't know I've only got anymore. one now. Yeah. Don't stop me off. No, sorry. But yeah, no, it's, it is. It, uh, we're trying to find hotels that we can take dogs to. Or oh, a dog to. Again. Yes. So, weirdly, listeners, so my dog Maisie died a year ago and Liz just recently lost her gorgeous Harry. So... Oh, that's oh, spooky. Okay, this is spooky. Is sp- spooky. I haven't even put that wallpaper on my phone. That's AI for Okay, you. so um, if you're actually <laughs> listening, not just watching on YouTube, a picture of my dog just came up on the phone. Mm, that's that really... Oh, I feel a bit... Mm. All right, well, on that creepy oh, no. note, I'm off to book a holiday. <laughs> I'm off to go and see my dog. Yeah, so bye from us. Bye. Chat soon. Bye.